Welcome to another AP Chemistry and General Chemistry video. My name is Jeremy Krug, and this is part of my complete course in AP Chemistry here on YouTube. Now, in this video, we're focusing on weak acids and weak bases and some of the uh, more complex questions that you could be asked about those. Now, here, we're going to be focusing on the relationship between Ka and Kb. Now, notice that if you take Ka and multiply it by Kb, that's equal to Kw. Now, we learned in the previous lesson, lesson 25, that at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. So that means that if you have the Ka of any weak acid and you want to know the Kb of its conjugate base, well, it's pretty easy to figure it out. You can just plug it into this equation and solve for it fairly easily. We're going to be doing some uh, examples with this here. Let's try this problem where we're given some weak acids and their Ka values. Let's see if we can find the Kb for their, their corresponding weak bases. So here we have propionic acid, which has the formula HC3H5O2, and there's its Ka. What is the Kb of C3H5O2 a negative? Well, all we have to do is take 1 times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by Ka. So it's a very important uh, value to know what Kw is. You know, just we, we can use that to find Kb or Ka given one of the two. When you key that into your calculator, you'll find that it's 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 10th. So as you can see here, that's a pretty small number. That would be expected though. Propionic acid is a, it's a weak acid, but it's not the weakest acid in the world. But its conjugate base has a very weak uh, uh, base property to it, doesn't it? It has a very, very small value for Kb. Let's compare this to hydrocyanic acid. Now here we have a Ka that's very small, 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10th. And so what's going to be the Kb value for its conjugate base, the cyanide ion? Well, once again, all we have to do to find Kb is take 1 times 10 to the negative 14th and divide it by that Ka value. So you can plug that into your calculator and you find that it's equal to 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. So a couple things we can see here. Of these two acids, we can see that propionic was the stronger of the two acids, right? Because it has the larger Ka value. Well, the stronger acid is going to correlate to the weaker conjugate base, right? We can see that from the Kb value. And likewise, the weaker acid, hydrocyanic, corresponds to the stronger conjugate base. That makes sense. If you want to compare the two Kb values, we can see the same thing here. The smaller the Kb value in magnitude, the weaker that base is. And here we have a somewhat larger Kb value. It means we have a stronger base. Now let's try another problem here. Let's say that we're asked to calculate the pH of a 1.00 molar solution of sodium fluoride. And we're given that the Ka for hydrofluoric acid at 25 degrees Celsius is 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, some students, in fact, a lot of students, will look at this problem and they will get uh, confused, completely confused, because they see this, this sodium on here and it just confuses them. They think that that sodium is doing something. The very first thing that we have to do before we work this problem is to realize that that sodium is basically not doing anything. The sodium ion is just there as a spectator, and so for all practical purposes, we can ignore it. So what we're really dealing with here is a one molar solution of fluoride ions. We need to keep that in mind whenever we're working this problem. Now the second thing we need to realize is that we were given a Ka for hydrofluoric acid, and that's very nice, but we're not dealing with hydrofluoric acid, are we? We're dealing with its conjugate base the fluoride ion. So we have to use that equation we just talked about to figure out what the Kb is here. So we're going to take 1 times 10 to the minus 14th and divide it 
by the Ka value that was given to us. And so we can figure out that the Kb of fluoride is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. So we have our Kb value for the weak base. Now the third thing we can do is to write the dissociation of the weak base and work the problem just like we would any other weak base problem that we've done already in this series. So let's do that. Let's write the base dissociation for fluoride. And we know that we should always add it to water in the case of a, of a base. One of the products is always going to be the conjugate acid of this base right here. So F negative is your base. The conjugate acid means just add an H plus to the front of it. So it's going to be HF. And since this is a base, we would expect hydroxide to be formed as well. And that makes sense because that's the conjugate base of the water. Now let's set this up as let's set this up as an icebox problem. And now we can plug in some numbers. So the concentration of fluoride is 1.00 molar, isn't it? Uh, the concentration of sodium ion is also one, but we don't care about that, do we? So we're going to plug these in here. The HF and the hydroxide will be about zero. And we're going to have a minus X plus X and X. So our equilibrium concentrations will be one minus X, X and X. Now we can plug these values into our equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. Remember, this is a base. So we're going to write this in terms of KB. KB equals the HF concentration times hydroxide concentration all over the fluoride concentration. Notice that we left out water because it's a pure liquid. Don't make the mistake of trying to put water in there and then trying to do something with that. Okay. Now we can plug and chug. So we've calculated our KB. It's 1.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. And that's equal to our X times our X all over 1 minus X. Now I noticed that KB, our equilibrium constant, is a very small number. So I really don't want to use a quadratic formula or a quadratic equation here. So I'm going to eliminate that minus X. I think it's safe to say that that is small enough that we can ignore it in this equation. Now we can cross multiply and we have our x times x which is x squared and we can take the square root to solve for x. So our x is going to be equal to 3.9 times 10 to the negative sixth. Notice that x is our hydroxide ion concentration. So that means that we can find the pOH of this pretty easily, can't we? Just take negative log of the hydroxide concentration to find out the pOH. So when we, when we do that, we find that the pOH equals about 5.41. So if we know pOH, then PO, pH is pretty easy to find, isn't it? Just subtract that from 14. And we find that our pH of this solution is right around 8.59. So that makes sense. This is a fairly, in fact, an extremely weak base, as you can see. And so even a one molar solution of this stuff isn't going to be, it, it, it'll be basic, but not extremely basic. It is over seven, but not that much over seven. So here, hopefully you can see how we can uh, determine the pH of a weak base, especially one that may not be uh, quite that obvious. We might have to solve for the KB in the case of this. Now, before we finish, let's take a look at some other types of questions that we could be asked about weak bases and weak acids. So here we have the, dissoci the dissociation of cyanic acid is given here. Which of the two bases is stronger? CNO negative, the cyanate ion, or water? Explain your answer. Now, it's interesting that we're given a weak acid to deal with here, which means that water is acting as a weak base. And of course, the cyanate ion is a weak base as well. It's the conjugate base. Now, it does give us a Ka for this. That tells us that HCNO, cyanic acid, is a weak acid. Now, when we want to talk about which base is stronger, think about what makes a base strong or stronger. Well, the stronger the base, the better it is at collecting or absorbing or, uh, or receiving H plus ions, protons, right? 
So is water very effective at receiving H pluses from the cyanic acid? No, it doesn't do that at all. In fact, it's, it's a weak acid, right? That's why it's probably less than 5% effective at doing this, right? So water in this case is not a very good base. But what about the cyanate ion? Is it very good at accepting H pluses from the hydronium? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's why we have so much of this stuff, right? We have a lot of that. We don't have a whole lot of, of these products over here. So if I were answering this question, I'd say, you know, cyanic acid is a weak acid. And so as a result, the cyanate ion is going to be very weak. It's just not very good. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the cyanate ion is going to be a very good uh, base in this case, at least much better than water is. And let's see what the uh, answer is. Yeah, since the value for Ka is small, the equilibrium lies far to the left. Therefore, cyanate is very effective at accepting protons while water is not as effective. So cyanate is the stronger base. So just as a rule of thumb, if you have a weak acid over here, that means that its conjugate base is still going to be a weak base, but it's going to be stronger, at least compared to water. Water is really not very good at picking up hydrogens over here. Let's try another example. Let's say we have this, this case, which is a stronger base, nitrate or water? Explain your answer. Now notice we have something a little bit different here. Nitric acid, HNO3, is a strong acid. And so as a result, since we're dealing with a strong acid, we don't really have an equilibrium. There is no double-headed arrow here, and there is no Ka value that we're dealing with either. So that means that water is a base. Is it able to accept H pluses from nitric acid? Yes, it is. In fact, it is really good at accepting H's from nitric acid. It's able to accept all of them. Right? That's why this reaction is, is able to go all the way to completion. So I'd say water is a really good base in this case. Made a little rhyme there. And, you know, I know that we normally don't think of water as being a base, but in this case, water is a really good base. Not a good case, it's a good base. Now, what about nitrate? Is nitrate able to accept any hydrogen ions from hydronium? No. And that's why this reaction goes to completion. Nitrate is a not just a bad base, it's a pathetic base. Like we said in the last lesson, lesson 25, these conjugate bases of strong acids, they couldn't accept hydrogen ions to save their life, could they? And so nitrate is an awful base. And so I would say that water is a much better base in this case. And that's what the answer says. Since nitric acid is a strong acid, the reaction goes to completion. As a result, water accepts protons very well from nitric acid, while nitrate is very ineffective at accepting protons. Water is the stronger base. So notice, for a strong acid, water is going to be the better base, and its conjugate base is going to be quite awful or uh, pathetic, as we can see right here. I hope this video has helped you to understand something about weak acids and weak bases. Uh, the entire AP Chemistry curriculum is on here. I hope you enjoy this. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, if you'll destroy that like button. Uh, not too much, though. I want you to not destroy your computer. Uh, hope you enjoy this and learn something from this video. I want you to get an A in your class and a 5 on your AP Chemistry exam if that's what you're going for. My name is Jeremy Krug. I want you to join me again in the future if you can where we can learn some more chemistry together.